Hello and welcome to part 2 of this complete beginners series. My name's Martin and in the last part we built the very basics of our armature using various shapes. Then we parented them together and adjusted the origins so that they are poseable. So far we have been working in an area of Blender called object mode. In order to transform our basic shapes into something more interesting we will need to enter sculpt mode. Left click the head, hold control and tab, hover over the sculpt mode pie menu option, then release control and tab. We have now entered sculpt mode. You will notice a variety of brushes appear on the left. If you don't, hit the T key to show and hide this menu. We can drag the right side of this out to see the names. There are a ton of brushes here, but we will only need three for now. Left click the draw brush at the top and hover over the head. You will see a preview circle of how your brush will affect the mesh. Hit the F key to then move the mouse and resize the brush. Once you have a size like mine, left click to confirm. Each brush also has a strength which determines how powerful your stroke is. To change this, hit Shift and F, then move the mouse and left click to confirm, just like the size. As the head is mostly symmetrical, we can turn on X symmetry here to save us some time while sculpting. Each change we make to one side will be reflected on the other. We won't need the draw brush just yet, so let's select the grab brush. While hovering over the side of the head, left click and drag the mesh inwards to squish the head a little. Then as before, use the F key to shrink the size and left click and drag to pull out the chin. We won't be focusing on anatomy here, so we won't get very detailed. This is just a chance to try out some basic brushes and see how they feel. Use the middle mouse button to rotate around the head while you push and pull out areas. You can see we will quickly have a head like shape. Now select the draw brush again and left click and drag over the mesh. This brush allows you to paint over the mesh. A normal left click pulls out the mesh, holding control and left click pushes it in. Changing the strength and size of this brush can enable you to sculpt almost anything with a little practice. Holding shift and left click dragging smooths out the mesh. As you can see here, it's a bit too strong for our mesh. So click on the smooth brush at the left and lower the strength using shift F or dragging the menu item up here, left and right. Now back to our draw brush. Holding shift will smooth less aggressively. Let's move on to the neck now. We can hit control tab and hover over object mode to then select the neck and enter sculpt mode the same way. However, we face a new challenge with this object. As you can see, while we hover over the cylinder, the dot snaps only to the top and bottom. Hold Z and select the wireframe to reveal the geometry of this shape. As we can see, there is not much here for our sculpt brushes to modify like the head. We will need to remesh to increase the division on this object. Hit Shift and R to bring up the remesh grid. Then move the mouse left and right to change the size of this grid. This will define the size of our remesh. Once you have a size like mine, left click and hit Ctrl R to remesh. Nip back into wireframe mode using Z to check out our new mesh. There's much more to work with now. Using the grab brush we can tweak the neck with more control and give it a little more shape. Let's enter sculpt mode for the chest now, but oh no, the brush appears skewed here and not circular like before. Hit N to bring up the side menu 
and select the item tab. Check out the Z scale here. We can see that this is greater than one. So our object is not uniformly skewed. Let's hop back into object mode and correct this. Hit control and A and choose scale. This will apply our current scale and set all axes to 1. Now when we enter sculpt mode, everything is ok. Turn on symmetry and begin shaping this too. We are trying to make a more ribcage like shape here. Onto the hips next, Control A to apply the scale here, then enter sculpt mode and begin shaping using our three brushes. Practicing these three will really take you a long way while sculpting, before moving on to other more specialised brushes. Select the bicep part of the arm and try to apply the scale. This time we get an error. This is because this is linked with the other arm. If you remember in the previous part, we used Alt D to link duplicate the limbs. To understand this a little better, let's go to the object data properties menu here and look at the name of the mesh assigned to this object. As we select each object, you can see that the same mesh is being used for each one. If we choose another mesh in the drop down, we can switch out the mesh for another one. So we need to run a command called make single user and select make single user object and data. Data is referring to the mesh data assigned to the object. Now our bicep is unique. We can apply the scale and start shaping it. We now need to link the other bicep back up with the new mesh we created. First of all, apply the scale on the bicep, then select the bicep we want to link first, then hold shift and select the bicep we want to link to, then hit control L and choose link object data. We can continue on with all the other parts using what we have learned and shape the other objects. So now we have our objects in place, let's pose this guy. Selecting each object, then hitting R allows you to rotate it. Hitting R twice allows you to do a handy free rotate. I find this really useful for posing as you are not constrained to one axis. That's a cool looking pose, I think he's ready for action now. And that just about does it for this complete beginners series. We have gone over all the fundamental concepts required to manipulate objects and sculpt them using the very basic but powerful brushes Blender has to offer. From here, the sky's the limit. If you haven't already, check out my full sculpting and miniature series to get an insight into the full character creation process. If you enjoyed the series, consider supporting the channel by liking this video, subscribing and checking out my Patreon, where you can get videos early and lots of free miniatures. See you all in the next video.